Okay, uh, welcome everybody. And I'm so glad to see you and that you all made it online. Um, thank you for all your patience with the changes to not having some of it in person. And of course, we all miss being in the beautiful Jokong, which is such a beautiful space. But uh, anyway, the roads are pretty bad here in the Portland area. So I'm sure you understand. Um, we'll go ahead and start by setting our motivation with the four immeasurable thoughts and refuge in bodhicitta. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. Sangi Chudam Sogi Chudam Lai Janju Badu Dani Kapsuchi Dagi Junyan Gi Pe Sonam Gi Rola Penchi Sangi Drupa Shol Sangi Chudam Sogi Chudam Lai Janju Badu Dani Kapsuchi Dagi Junyan Gi Pe Sonam Gi Rola Penchi Sangi Drupa Shol Sangi Chudam Sogi Chunam La Janju Badu Dani Kapsuchi Dagi Junyan Gi Pe Sonam Gi Rola Penchi Sangi Drupa Shol Just letting that motivation sink in. Okay. So today we're going to be using the short green Tara practice. And this is not the same as the Tara Puja that some of you are used to doing with Yangtze Rinpoche. This is based on the Kriya Tantra, lower Tantra, action Tantra version of Tara. And it's a uh, incredibly sweet, profound, connecting kind of practice. And it's also quite short. So it's the sort of one that when you're needing a little bit of a boost, a little bit of extra connection in your practice, it's an excellent one to add kind of as needed. Or if you are wanting to build your daily practice and add a little bit to your daily practice, this would be a really nice one to add. It's got a very short long rim glance meditation at the beginning. Then it's got a very strong association with guru yoga, and then a purification of body, speech, and mind with a really beautiful visualization. So if you don't have the empowerment of green Tara, then you just visualize Tara in the space in front in any section where it says, I arise as. So you don't arise as unless you have permission to arise as. And I think most of you know that, but just kind of to make sure we're all on the same page. And whenever we're doing one of these practices, you can just check. So here is the practice we'll be using today. And you'll see this one is composed by Lama Zopa Rinpoche, Lama Tupton Yeshi, and it tells you what version we're up to. And then here, practice requirements. One needs a Kriya Tantra empowerment of green Tara to practice this sadhana in full. However, one can do this practice without such an empowerment, as long as one does not generate oneself as the deity, the deity being green Tara. If one does not have the empowerment, one can do the self-generation practice at the crown of one's head, or also you can do it in the space in front, whichever is more comfortable. 
So um, just kind of some housekeeping there. This text has the practice, but it also has a really beautiful commentary you might want to read later. And then the praises to the 21 Taras, both the chantable version and the literal English translation that's a bit more specific. So we'll be starting um, on page five and I'll do share screen, but um, if you'd prefer to have it in front of you, that's what we'll be starting. Okay, so it's three sessions today and each session we'll do the practice, emphasizing something slightly different. And this way you kind of get uh, a really direct connection with the practice and a kind of a flexibility with it. So you can realize that even doing the same thing every single day, there can be variation in what is emphasized based on what you need, based on your time, and just kind of getting a friendship sort of feeling with these practices. It's helpful to do them in slightly different ways. So same practice three times, slightly different emphasis. And I'll also make sure there's time for questions and I'll give you just brief little snippets of explanation on the practice, just to kind of keep us in the flow. And I know a lot of you are long-term practitioners, you know this practice or you know practices similar to it quite well and you don't really need any explanation. So if I'm repeating things that you know, just go, oh yeah, <laughs> right. And just remember that you know it. So I realize lots of you are totally on top of this kind of content. Just in case there's some brand new people, I'm going to do the five minute summary of who Tara is, and then we're going to go into the practice itself. Okay, so just in case there's some brand new people. So this is from The Power of Mantra, a book by Lama Zopa Rinpoche that came out last year. I really recommend this book. He says, Tara is a special deity a manifestation of all the Buddha's holy actions of body, speech, and mind. Therefore, she is called mother. By depending on Tara, one receives enlightenment, as all those who in the past have depended on this special deity, this manifestation of all the Buddha's holy actions, have received enlightenment. So the key words here are action, holy action, um, as shown by her iconography of one foot out, ready to leap to the aid of sentient things. Mother, in the sense of her qualities, help birth your enlightenment. So not necessarily mother in the colloquial sense, but still that sense of warmth and care. So in the Vilma Kirti near Dasetta Sutra, the tar that Tara says, in this life, there are no such distinctions as male and female, self-identity, a person, nor any perception of such. Therefore, attachment to the idea of male and female is quite worthless. Weak-minded worldlings are continually deluded by this. However, <laughs> the sutra goes on to record the following vow by Tara. There are many who wish to gain enlightenment in a man's form and there are but few who wish to work for the welfare of sentient beings in a female form. Therefore, may I, in a female body, work for the welfare of beings until samsara has been emptied." So these are the quotes from Tara herself in various sutras. And so it's an interesting, almost like a paradox, where she's saying, ultimately, there is no such distinction as male and female, but relatively, there is. And in the relative world, there's been a trend of practitioners being in a man's form, working for enlightenment. So to kind of even it out and balance it out, I'm going to do these works in female form, just so people know that it doesn't really matter what form you're in. The mind is the thing that becomes enlightened, and any body is workable. So she's the Buddha of action and protection, the female meditational deity embodying the virtuous conduct of enlightened beings, referred to as the mother of the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. And this is just kind of a glossary definition from Lama Yeshi's uh, really beautiful seminal text, Introduction to Tantra, The Transformation of Desire. And this is an old text that is just a classic for many reasons. It's a beautiful, beautiful experiential kind of a text. So Introduction to Tantra by Lama Yeshi, if you haven't read it, is just wonderful. Okay. So Urgen Tobga Rinpoche noted, 
Tara's tenacity is immense. Buddha Shakyamuni vowed to awaken to enlightenment in the age when people's lifespan had degenerated to 100 years. His resolve is considered superior to that of other Buddhas. Buddha Shakyamuni Buddha himself, when teaching a sutra and tantra on Tara, said that among all the other Buddhas, Manjushri and Tara are the two who have exceedingly great resolve. Tara is like an emanation of the mother of all the Buddhas of the three times. She carries out all their activities, dispelling the obstacles created through the eight or 16 types of fear. Most significantly, she vowed to emanate in female form until all of samsara is emptied. When anyone supplicates Tara, her response is swift. The activities resulting from her aspiration are extraordinary, and there is ample evidence of this right up to the present day. Both Buddhists and non-Buddhists alike honor the divinity of Jetsantara. There are quite a few traditions for her sadhana practice, not only in the sutras, but also in the tantras. Each of the four levels of tantra, from Kriya to Unatara, has its own distinct Tara practice. Practitioners who wish to benefit beings and attain realization based on Tara need to garner the energy of the aspiration and apply it. We'll go ahead and just do the practice and just jump right in. And then afterwards, I'll kind of help unpack and explain some parts. So rather than preemptively explain too much, let's just jump right in. And then we can also have time for questions after the break. So if you want to take a minute and just get yourself very oriented to your physicality, be with your body. Let your mind become aware of your physical sensations. And by bearing witness to your own physical experience, see if you can gently invite the body to relax and balance. In thinking about your body, you can adopt the attitude recommended by Roshi Joan Halifax. Strong back, soft front. Stable and receptive.
And then gradually shift your focus to the breath itself. Letting your attention be simple and direct. When you breathe out, you simply know that you're breathing out. When you breathe in, you simply know that you're breathing in. Just be with the breath. And there is no need to agree or disagree with your thoughts. Not pushing, not pulling. Just let your thoughts think in the background, but choose not to give them your attention. Keep emphasizing your focus on the breath. And think 
I take refuge in the Holy Guru, essence of all Buddhas, original grantor of all holy teachings, and Lord of all supreme beings. Connecting with that. Please, Guru Buddhas, bestow on me the ability to unify my mind with the Dharma and be successful in practicing Dharma in order to achieve the graduated path. May no hindrances occur while achieving this path. Please bless me to realize that I have received a perfect human rebirth, which is highly meaningful for many reasons difficult to obtain, but perishable, transient, and fragile, decaying in the shortest moment because of its changeable nature. Thus my death is definite, but its actual time is most indefinite. And after death, I'm far more likely to be reborn in the lower suffering realms, having created infinitely more negative than positive karma in this life and all previous lives. Please bless me to comprehend how incredibly unendurable is the suffering of the lower realms, that I might take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha with all my heart, and realize the evolution of karma and all its profundity, that I might perform only virtuous actions and abandon all negative creations. By practicing in this way, I will be reborn in the upper realms, but will still have to experience unlimited samsaric suffering because of uncontrolled delusion and karma. Please bless me to realize fully the evolution of samsara, from uncontrolled rebirth to death to rebirth, and to follow day and night the three higher trainings of the path, higher conduct, higher concentration, and higher wisdom, which are the main methods to release me from samsara.
But as each sentient being has been my mother, and as most of them are in extreme suffering, please bless me to bring success to all by renouncing the perfect happiness of self and practicing the bodhisattva's deeds of the six perfections with the bodhisattva's mind of exchanging self with others on the basis of the equanimity meditation. Thus shall I have no sorrow in experiencing the samsaric sufferings of all other sentient beings, for no matter how long, having trained my mind in the general path. Please bless me to follow the quick Vajrayana teachings by feeling sentient beings suffering very unimaginably unbearable for even the shortest moment as my own and to achieve the attainment of Shakyamuni Buddha immediately at this very moment by keeping my ordinations and the instructions of the guru with the best and highest care in life for the sole purpose of enlightening all sentient beings. And so with that motivation, visualize. Above the crown of my head, I visualize a lotus and moon disc. Upon these is the great treasury of compassion, Aryatara, mother of all enlightened beings, who is oneness with my kind root guru. My guru is seated in the full lotus position within a transparent bubble of rainbow-colored light, is pink in complexion, and wears saffron robes and a pandit's hat. His right hand is at his heart in the gesture of teaching the Dharma and holds a vajra and stem of a white lotus that blooms beside his right ear. His left hand rests on his hip, holds a bell in the stem of another white lotus that blooms beside his left ear. At my guru's heart is Aryatara in female aspect, green in color and seated in the dancing posture within a rainbow bubble. Her left leg is bent up and her right leg is outstretched. Her left hand is at her heart, in the mudra symbolizing the triple gem, and holding the stem of a blue tapali flower. Her right hand extended over her right knee is in the mudra of granting sublime realizations. She is beautifully adorned with jeweled ornaments and scarves, and at her three places bear the syllables Om, Ah, and Hum. At her heart is a lotus and moon, on which stands a radiant green syllable, Tam. Stabilizing that part of the visualization, the guru in the aspect of Lama Tsongkhapa, with green Tara at his heart, the syllables at her crown, throat, and heart, even if you just have a general impression of green, 
feel that the Guru Buddha is present. Rays of green light radiate in all directions from the Tam and invoke all the enlightened beings of the ten directions. They are all absorbed into Arya Tara and become one. And think that we say to her, please remain above my head until I receive enlightenment. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. With my body, speech, and mind, I devoutly prostrate. I offer all offerings, both real and imagined. All sins and offenses amassed from beginningless time I confess. I rejoice in all virtuous actions of holy and ordinary beings. O oh, gurus and buddhas, please remain until samsara ends and turn the wheel of dharma for sentient beings. All my virtues and those of all others I dedicate to the great enlightenment. This ground, anointed with perfume strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine this was a buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. The objects of my attachment, aversion, and ignorance, friends, enemies, and strangers, and my body, wealth, and enjoyments. Without any sense of loss, I offer this collection. Please accept it with pleasure and bless me with freedom from the three poisons. Yadam Guru Ratna Mandala And we request, please bless me to purify all obscurations, non-virtues of my body, so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. And in response, white light emanates from the Om at Arya Tara's brow, curves in an arc to enter my brow. My body is purified completely of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. Being with that, from her brow to yours, white light purifying the body.
this white light purifying all negativities of body, killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, any harm that you've ever done physically, purified, cleared. And the white light also ripening positive seeds, all of the ways you may have saved life, protected the possessions of others, respected the relationships and bodies of others, all of the help and aid you've done physically, those positive seeds growing and ripening. and shift. Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my speech so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. And in response, red light emanates from the awe at Arya Tara's throat, curves in an arc to enter my throat. My speech is purified completely of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. Stabilizing that. Red light from her throat to yours. Purifying negative karma of lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, senseless speech. Anything harmful or unskillful done verbally, purifying that, ripening the positive seeds, having, sp having spoken truthfully, skillfully, kindly. and shift. Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my mind so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra mind. And visualize blue light emanates from the Kum at Arya Tara's heart and curves in an arc to enter my heart. My mind is purified of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra mind. Stabilizing that blue light from her heart center to your heart center. Purifying covetousness, ill will, wrong views, all negative harmful mental habits.
ripening the positive states of mind, loving kindness, compassion, wisdom, etc. Please bless me to purify all delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience so that my body, speech, and mind will become one with Guru Tara's holy body, speech, and mind. And now three colored beams emanate simultaneously from the Om, Ah, and Hum syllables, curving in an arc and entering my three places completely purifying all my delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience. My body, speech, and mind become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. And then my root guru dissolves into Aryatara, who melts into green light, which flows into me. Instantly, my wrong conception that I and all other phenomena are self-existent, together with my dualistic mind and its views, disappear becoming completely empty. Not even a trace of them remains. I concentrate one-pointedly in this empty state with the wisdom that is indistinguishably one with Guru Tara's blissful, omniscient mind. Then, out of that emptiness, my wisdom manifests instantly as Aryatara's holy body, seated upon a lotus and moon cushion. At my heart is another lotus and moon, upon which in the center stands the syllable Tam, surrounded in a clockwise direction by the syllables of the mantra, Om Tare Tu Tare Turi Soha. The Tam and the mantra are manifestations of Guru Tara's holy mind with which my mind is totally united. For those without the empowerment, visualize this in the space in front. 
or at your crown. Green light radiates from all the letters, spreading in every direction. It purifies the negative karmas, gross delusions, and subtle obscurations to omniscience of all sentient beings who become Tara. Again, light radiates, bearing manifold offerings to the six transcendental senses of all the Buddhas and sentient beings who have become Tara. The enlightened beings are extremely pleased and shower down the superlative qualities of Buddha, Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. Omniscient wisdom, supreme power, and infinite compassion in the form of a great shower of light rays. As we recite the mantra, we absorb and are blessed by this rain. Stabilizing that visualization. Light going out, light coming in, light going out, purifying, sending offerings, light coming in, bringing blessings. Add the mantra. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. 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 And think that Tara dissolves into light and absorbs into you, blessing your body, speech, and mind. And we dedicate. May I quickly become Guru Arya Tara, Agma Droma, and lead each and every sentient being to her enlightened state because of these merits. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. And you can relax your attention. Okay. So sometimes you can skip the Lamrim prayer at the beginning and just jump right in and then add Tara praises if you want. 
Sometimes you can do skipping that. Skipping Tara praises give lots of time to the mantra. Sometimes you give tons of time to the guru yoga. It's really a very flexible practice that can really be as long or as short as you want it to be. So while it's fresh, um, do you have any off the top of your head questions before we take a short break? I, I do have a question, Venerable. This is Rocio. Oh, my, uh, my question has to do with when we are in the process of purification, how, um, how broad or how specific should we be? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's a flexible practice. So it could be some days you're just thinking in general purifying body, purifying speech, purifying mind, and emphasizing may my positive qualities of body, speech, and mind come forth as I leave the cushion and go about my day. You can also use it as this is my purification practice at the end of the day, like you would use Vajrasattva, and really meditate on regret before you do those visualizations with the arcs of light. So think, okay, today physically, you know, not mass murder, but I accidentally, you know, stepped on some ants, okay, stealing, all oh, right, I didn't return the thing I borrowed, I better do that before it becomes stealing, you know, you just do a quick review of the day like you would Vajrasattva, and then do the visualization as the remedy. Um, but whenever you're doing any kind of purification, think, whatever I remember, I also lay bare and am open about anything I can't remember from beginningless time, and may all of that be purified as well. So anything remembered or not remembered, may it all be purified, and then really feel like it has been. That's the main thing. So it's really your choice if you want to emphasize kind of clearing your system and bringing forth positive body, speech, and mind as kind of a morning launch sequence, or if you want to use this as more of an evening practice purification, like you would use Vajrasattva and really specifically purifying specific things, it's it's your choice. It's flexible that way. Does that answer your question? Sure. And then and I don't know if you know if someone else has a question. This is the first time that I do the light as an arc. So mm -hmm. it goes like this, like from the top to the bottom, like 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 this, or how? Like not, not raining, but as an art. It goes first this, I will show you in a second. Let's see, Dude, too quick, too quick. <laughs> we'll jump here, okay, like this. Yeah, okay. round, round. yeah, and then throat to throat, okay. then heart to heart, then all three. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, and then later when you do the mantra, it's more like the rain that you're used to, yep, yeah. Yeah, other other questions or um, things to add or share? Okay, well, then we'll go back through that visualization a little bit more slowly, <laughs> just briefly, and then we'll have a break just so you're sort of oriented before we um, do it again. So, all right, so this first part, you're seeing Lama Tsongkhapa. This is close to how you visualize it. Um, actually, he has a bell at his, more like at his hip, more kind of like Vajrasattva, but this is quite close. So you're visualizing and connecting with the guru in the aspect of Lama Tsongkhapa. Now, in this context, really think Lama Tsongkhapa is an amalgamation of all of the guru-ness, all of the teacher-ness, the lama-ness that you've ever accessed or experienced in your life comes together and takes this form as well as if you have an actual connection with Lama Tsongkhapa and the great treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment and his writings, add that. But really you're thinking the guru-ness of all of the Buddhas and all of your actual teachers happens to take this form in a sphere of rainbow light above the crown of your head. And then you add at the heart of the guru, green Tara. So she's at his heart center, um, exactly in the center, also within an orb of rainbow light. And then you kind of zoom in. Yeah, you zoom in and you think of Tara specifically, knowing that she's within the heart of Loma Tsongkhapa, but you kind of zoom in and you think at her three places, Om at the crown, Ah at the throat, Hum at the heart. Mark her three places, representing holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. And this is quite similar throughout all the different sadhanas that you find. 
And then also at her heart on a lotus and moon disc is a radiant green syllable tom. So there's a whom that's blue, and then there's also a tom that's green. And that feels confusing unless you realize that everything is made of transparent light, is three-dimensional and clear. So then you don't worry about the fact that they're both at the heart. And it's from that whom, or excuse me, it's from that tom that she invites all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to come and merge with her. And then during the purification, she shifts, you shift to just thinking of her specifically, and then from her brow to yours, from her throat, throat to yours, from her heart to yours, those arcs of light. Yeah. So when you're doing the body, you think soothing, purifying, healing, and also you can think of specific things you need to purify. Similarly for the speech. And give this as much time as you need to when you're doing this by yourself. Soothing, purifying, healing, all negativities of speech. Soothing, purifying, healing, all negativities of mind. And then all three, getting rid of subtle obscurations and delusions. And then there's the disillusion. So he dissolves into her. She dissolves completely. Yeah. And then after the meditation on emptiness, you focus on the mantra garland at her heart. So either you as Tara, if you have the empowerment, or Tara in the space in front, you're focusing on the mantra garland and light going out in all directions. So this is just kind of a brief one. And if at first, you know, it feels like a lot of moving parts, but actually after once or twice, even it starts to really be in the flow. And if you're not a great visualizer, don't squeeze at all. Just hold as much detail as you can comfortably. So if you're getting bored, you can add more elaboration, detail, clarity. If you're getting too tight, soften the edges of everything. Because it's like... Uh, all forms of meditation where you want to be in that kind of sweet spot of not too tight, not too loose. So if you're feeling like you're starting to drift, that means you have enough mental space to add elaboration, detail, and hold more in mind. If your mind is overwhelmed and it's too many details and it's too much and too new, soften it up and make it just general greenness. Does that make sense? So you're trying to really work with what is my mind like today? What is my mind able to hold today while being fresh and clear and relaxed? Okay, so we'll have a 15 minute break and um, I'll see you then.